Hey everybody, it's Justin with Siage Scents, and we're going to talk about Middle Eastern clone fragrances today. And I'm telling you, the clone market has been exploding the past year or two. It's been accelerating more and more, you know, this past year and even the year before that. It's just this snowball effect. I remember 20 years ago when you were buying a clone fragrance, you would go on eBay and just take a shot in the dark, blind buying from some brand you had never heard of, and you were happy if you got something that was, you know, 60 or 70% similar to the designer or niche fragrance that you were going for. But nowadays, some of these brands are getting so good that the fragrances are so close you can't tell them apart. Or in some cases, they're stronger than or for another reason, preferable to the OG. And so we're going to talk about Paris Corner, I think one of the best, one of the rising stars in the Middle Eastern clone market. We're going to dive into this, but before we do, please consider giving a subscribe to the channel. We've got videos coming out every couple days, and I think you'll like them if you like this one. Also consider giving the video a like. All right, here we go. We're going to get into this. Now, a lot of these, actually all of these Paris Corner fragrances are from the Emir line. And I've also got another brand that I want to mention to you that I don't really know how to categorize it, but it fits well in this video. So these are all Paris Corner Emir, and this one is Wild and Tobacco. This is one of the best, if not the best, tobacco fragrance I have ever put my nose on. It is strong, it is loud, it is powerful, it's long-lasting. It's a clone of Mancera's Red Tobacco, which is one of the beast of beast mode uh, fragrances. And this one is not far behind. As soon as I sprayed it on, I had two thoughts. One, this is one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled. And two, this is a powerful, powerful scent. And so what you get with this one, you've got tobacco, obviously. It's a little bit of a smoky or incense tobacco. You've also got a very clear um, uh, patchouli note that is a dark, very evident, kind of slightly earthy patchouli note, even a little bit of a chocolatey patchouli note. You've also got uh, a, a good dose of cinnamon as well as some other spices, some pepper. So you've got a very spicy kind of fragrance. And so you've got those, that dark patchouli and a strong tobacco with a little bit of smoke on the edges as well as uh, some sweetness uh, and some spiciness. This thing is absolutely a killer. It is strong and uh, the opening some would consider to be a little weird. I don't think it's quite as, uh, you know, potentially divisive as Red Tobacco's opening, uh, but it's something different. I'll just say that. But I absolutely love it start to finish. If the opening is too much, give it about 10 minutes and you'll absolutely love it if you love tobacco fragrances. And speaking of tobacco fragrances, this next one is a clone of, you know, what most many would consider to be the pinnacle of tobacco fragrances. It's a clone of Zerjoff Naxos. This is Emir Vu Elegante. And it is, um, if you have smelled one that a lot of people in the fragrance community have smelled, even if they don't buy $300 niche fragrances, if you've smelled Insurrection to Wild, which is a clone of Pure Havan, it's in the same family as that one, but it's a much softer fragrance. It's not as dark. It's not as loud. It's not as uh, pungent. It's a softer tobacco kind of a honeyed tobacco. It's also a powdery fragrance. And this one also has a pretty good dose of spiciness. Nowhere near as intense of a spiciness as wild and tobacco. This is, I would say, a more crowd-pleasing, a more mild, a more, uh, you know, easier to get into, more wearable tobacco fragrance. And it is gorgeous. This would be a great first tobacco fragrance, actually. The performance on this one isn't mind-blowing like some of these others are. It's about a six-hour performer on me, seven if I'm really lucky, uh, but it is an awesome fragrance profile. All right, next up, 
I'm going to go with one that's a freshie. This is one that I couldn't believe it when I saw that they cloned it. This is the first one I saw where they cloned a Mancera fragrance. I think that's true of many people. This is a clone of Cedrat Boise by Mancera, and this is just Cedrat Essence. And it is just this gorgeous, bright, juicy, citrus fragrance. You've got uh, bergamot and uh, I think uh, orange and uh, maybe lime, lime or lemon. So this juicy, bright fruitiness as well as a black currant, kind of a sweet, tart black currant. But then you've also got some woods, you've got a touch of leather, so a little bit of darkness on the edges that really kind of anchors the fragrance. This is a killer. It's a, there's a reason. I think it's actually Mancera's best-selling fragrance, and there is a good reason for that. This one in the spring and the summer, you can't beat it. Uh, you know, both Cedrat Boise and this one, I tend to go nose blind to. Some people say it's like a 10 hour performer. I would put this one also in about the six hour, maybe seven hour range, but that's great for a freshie that's citrus heavy. Definitely recommend picking that up. This one I think you would consider a freshie as well, but it's different because it's just such a very unique fragrance. This one is Emir Celestial, and it is a clone of a niche fragrance that I would say is definitely not for everyone because kind of the standout of this fragrance is that it's uh, got a mineral note that's going to remind you of like wet rocks or wet clay. This one is a clone of Ganymede, and Ganymede, again, is a fragrance that uses uh, saffron and uses uh, some orange and uses uh, a minerality that mixes together with a little bit of that spicy texture from saffron and a little bit of sweetness from orange, as well as a good dose of leather. I think it's actually a, a resin rather than a straight-up leather note. Uh, but it's, you know, leathery saffron orange that somehow comes across as smelling like wet clay. I haven't tried the original Ganymede, but from what I understand, this one is a very good clone of Ganymede. All right, just a few more here. This next one, uh, I think it just came out. It certainly just came on my radar. It's a clone of Mancera's newest hype beast. It's a clone of Tonka Cola. And this one is Emir Cherry Cola. And it is gorgeous. It literally smells like a fizzy cherry cola. They use uh, lemon and cinnamon uh, and some other spices to give it sort of a fizzy effervescent feel. And then it's got cherry and a note they just call cola. And so it literally feels like a sparkling effervescent cola. Smells like, I should say, wrapped around a heart of sweet tonka bean. It's definitely, I would say, a cooler weather fragrance. It is absolutely gorgeous. I've really been loving it since I picked it up. I haven't even heard anybody talk about it really yet, but this one's a banger. I think it's going to end up getting some hype. Cherry Cola by Paris Corner Amir Line. All right, these next three I'm going to mention. Uh, they're from a brand that, again, I rarely hear anybody talk about, but I think they need some attention, and I'll tell you why. Because they're cloning some fragrances, like I first saw a clone from them of Dior Homme Intense before I saw a clone of DHI from other brands. I'm talking about Riffs, R-I-F-F-S. And this one, for instance, is called Avant Garde, and it's a clone of Prada Lome. <clears throat> and it's a strong clone of Prada Lome. This, to me, is stronger than Prada Lome EDT. If I spray more than three or four sprays of this, it will give me a headache. And it is basically like fresh, soapy iris to the max, to the extreme. It's like, you know, I don't know, it feels to me like it's twice as powerful for the first couple hours as Prada Lome is. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing. If I were to spray this on me six or eight times, I would hate it. It would choke me out. It would be way too much. But three sprays of this is absolutely perfect. You know, fresh, uh, uh, fresh iris with a little bit of cardamom mixed in there and just this very sort of clean, soapy smell. It's a fantastic office fragrance. It's an everyday scent. It's a signature scent. But just take it easy on the sprays because it is strong. 
And another one from Riffs that is strong is this one right here, Le Fleur de Passion. And this one is a clone of Terenzi Kirke. I was going to say Kirk, but I think you're actually supposed to say Kirke. And I think that means church. Uh, but it's a fragrance that is a, a very uh, strong, loud, fruity, floral, aromatic fragrance. It, uh, it's got some real similarities to Zerjoff's Herba Pura. Uh, I haven't smelled Herba Pura, but I smelled Kirke out at a department store and fell in love and started looking for clones. And lo and behold, Riffs has one. And again, this is a strong fragrance. If I spray more than three or four sprays of this, it would be way too much. It is syrupy sweet. Uh, it's very, very fruity, but it's also got something that will remind you of like, like honey, like think syrupy, sweet, very weighty kind of fragrance. I would not be wearing this in 90 degrees like I would most fruity fragrances, but right now that we're going into the fall, this is like the perfect season for something like this. It's definitely unisex. I don't think that it leans far feminine or anything like that, but you have to like sweet fragrances with fruitiness and a little bit of an aromatic edge in order to like this one. And if you do, then I think now's the time to wear it as we're heading into the fall. So those two from Riffs, I don't have many from them, and I, you know, I'm not even aware of too many from them. This is another one that I only have one fragrance from this Middle Eastern company, uh, and it's a banger, and it's so cheap. Less than $20, you can get this one right here, Sapil Bound. This is a clone of Armani Code Profumo, and it's an excellent clone. It's a powerful clone. This is like a 10 to 12 hour fragrance. What you need to know about it though, is in the first 10 minutes, there is this very kind of candied synthetic sweetness that I, I'll just straight up say, it smells kind of cheap for the first 10 minutes or so. But once that overpowering sweetness, which I think at this price level, they've got to inject that kind of powerful sweetness in order to give you something that's going to last with so many distinctives for so many hours. But after that initial 10 minutes wears off, it is almost indistinguishable from Profumo. This has got the lid on it and just moving it around, I'm getting, I'm getting whiffs of Profumo. That's how strong this stuff is. So it's a great, you know, again, probably 10 hour fragrance very close to Perfumo, and you can get it for less than $20. So that has been, I think, nine fragrances from Middle Eastern houses that deserve some attention. What the clone market is doing has been blowing my mind. I hope these companies are able to keep doing it and keep staying in business because this makes a father of four who works really hard and can't spend two or $300 on a bottle of fragrance makes me very happy. And I think that they will many of you out there as well. All right, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done that and go ahead and click that like button if you would. And also let me know down in the comments section, have you tried any of these? Do you have any of the other Paris Corner fragrances? Are they any good? And what's your favorite Middle Eastern cologne that you've been wearing lately? All right, I'm Justin. This has been Siage Sense. I'll see you on the next one.